We need to talk about this IGN post about Blizzard locking two of the new Diablo 4 themed skins behind a $40 bundle. Kotaku also wrote an article titled Overwatch 2 Players Raise Hell over Amora's Pricey and Lilith skin. And the main point I want to make to Overwatch players is you guys got to get over it. Now, I want to preface all of this by saying I am by no means defending Blizzard and its monetization practices and tactics. We live in this moment where game publishers will use any advantage at their disposal, including ones that are aimed at hijacking your brain in order to coax you into opening your wallet. But while I see these media outlets merely mirroring this outrage, I would like to have a deeper conversation surrounding fans and their relationship with Overwatch. Now, there is one aspect of this criticism against this $40 bundle that I 100% agree with, and that is locking skins behind a hard cash paywall. This is not the first skin, and it surely won't be the last to do it, but it undermines the economy that Blizzard created. They encourage players to gain Overwatch coins by either converting their hard-earned money or earning it via weekly challenges at a laughably awful rate of about 60 cents per week. It kind of reminds me of that minimum wage machine someone built. It's a particularly cruel way to subtly force players to come back every week. But by releasing high value skins and PVE missions behind a hard paywall, you're telling players that they shouldn't invest into or rely on the Overwatch coins economy because it can no longer guarantee that it can be used for everything they introduced. It's like Dave and Buster selling you one of their power cards, but all the fun machines are cash only. Now, my main gripe with those articles and these Reddit threads is the inherent insanity behind people still being surprised by these tactics. We're talking about a leadership team that hid the cancellation of its most intriguing new feature, lied at launch by not revealing that PVE was changing, and then releasing a lesser than version closer to a year later, devoid of those earlier promises and charging players $15 for a few hours of fun. Skin prices have yet to decrease since launch, Quality control has definitely taken a hit as it's rare for a new season to start and there not be a bug that causes a map or hero to be removed. It happened again this season with Hanzo being put on the DL for a few hours. They've recolored skins to try and double dip on sales. The Dallas Fuel Championship Reaper skin was clearly just a recycled concept and not built from the ground up to honor the team as with previous releases. You know, Blizzard has stuck to their game plan since launch it has followed the monetization tactic of most other free-to-play games but they still continue to be thrust into this spotlight overwatch skin prices are comparable to other free-to-play games but this continues to be a problem for one reason fans are still holding on to overwatch one and it's time to let it go it's been over a year and as hard as it may be to accept that the best skins will forever release behind a paywall, it's time to accept that this is not the same game. I've also noticed the word greed continues to be thrown around, and I'm going to sound like I'm defending Blizzard, but this isn't greed. It's business in line with their decision to move to free-to-play. It's a different business model altogether, and your path to profitability must be different compared to boxed releases. You don't go to a buffet and ask why the quality is lower compared to a traditional restaurant. It's a different business model. And let's be honest, this move was made because Blizzard knew it would make more money this way. Because as much as you like to sit there and say, who the hell would pay $40 to access this skin? Let me tell you, it's more than enough people. Overwatch 2 cracked the top 50 bestsellers on Steam when Season 7 began, and if you remember, that was the platform that crowned it the worst rated video game of all time. So the wallets are there, and everyone perceives value differently. So how am I going to be upset at a company releasing a game for free and selling optional add-ons at a price people are willing to pay? I'm not getting upset at the McDonald's cashier because a McChicken is now over $3, which is insane, by the way. McDonald's set their price, and now it's up to me to decide whether I want to pay it or not. But you guys keep going back to McDonald's to keep complaining about the prices. But at some point, you have to realize how insane that is. And whether you think the move to free-to-play is fortunate or not depends on the side of the fence you're standing on. It's up to us 
to determine our threshold when it comes to interacting with a free product. Perfect example is YouTube. I gain access to millions of hours of free, mostly educational content. And in exchange, I have to sit through a few five second ads, maybe the occasional 10 second unskippable. To me, that's a good trade. There's definitely a line they can cross, but that line is determined by me and they haven't crossed it. If advertising cosmetics that let's be honest, you don't even see since the game is first person, is this much of a deal breaker for you? Then stop mentally torturing yourself and go play something else. We're in this golden age of content. We're drowning in games right now. Because for me, greedy is NBA 2K, selling you a $70 game and then immediately shoving ads in your face to spend more on stuff that won't work when the new game drops in a year. As an Overwatch fan, I've been able to access and play a pretty good shooter for free. New heroes, maps, and modes releasing in greater quantities in a shorter time span for free. Skins and emotes, while not the best, still able to be earned for free. And what you guys need to understand is these servers don't run on goodwill and virtual likes. We've seen dozens of free-to-play games shutter in under a year because they couldn't get the economics to work. In a free-to-play game, your relationship with the consumer has to change. Since you're not charging them up front, you must continue to find ways to convert a free player to a customer. When I see someone with that Lilith Mora skin, I say, there goes the guy that's keeping this game free for me. And while yes, I'm sure Blizzard could choose to break close to even with this game, sell skins for five bucks and make just enough to keep the servers running, this is a business. And it doesn't make sense criticizing a company for how they price their non-essential goods. And the thing is, you guys are viewing Overwatch 1's economy favorably because this one doesn't give you a chance to get something really good for free. But it doesn't make loot boxes that much better. I feel like people forget that Overwatch 1's price didn't all of a sudden give you access to every single skin release. You had to pay to access the game and then earning new cosmetics was a roll of the dice. If this skin released in Overwatch 1, $40 would give you 50 chances to possibly get that skin. And based on original odds, only about three to four of those boxes will contain a legendary item, and there's no guarantee that Lilith Mora would have been one of those legendaries. Because whether you were earning loot boxes or paying for the chance to unlock something you wanted, it still wasn't guaranteed. The reason why I don't see this system as greed per se is because the entire time I've played this game, I haven't been forced to spend a dime. The core game is still great, and it's still free. And there are personal lines I've drawn in the sand where I have no problem calling Blizzard's leadership and monetization team shameless as I have many times in the past. And I have no problem pointing out greed when I see it, such as locking heroes behind a pay or play wall. I still think the unlock should be set even lower. There's also the very scummy tactic of introducing skins in the shop as part of a bundle, but not providing a button that leads players to the hero gallery page where you can buy the same skin for 1,900 coins instead of spending 2,600 for extra stuff you might not want. Another thing Blizzard is being greedy with are common and rare cosmetics, including legacy skins. These should be earnable at a much higher rate. Should it take weeks of playing to earn a different color for your favorite hero? But I'm supposed to dismiss this free game as greedy because they're not giving away the cash cow skins that don't affect gameplay balance in the slightest? It's been over 12 months since release, and I don't understand how you guys haven't either A, accepted this new economy, or B, left to play something else. Because it's obvious this game's switch to free-to-play was a for-profit initiative. And while releasing Lilith Mora for 10 bucks would have made more people happy, Blizzard has access to enough data to tell them that placing her in a $40 bundle would make more money, especially because shoving her in all the ads and key art would further strain that FOMO part of your brain to not want to miss this opportunity. I'm not defending their way of making money. I'm just saying, imagine sitting in your favorite bar and every week this guy walks in to enjoy free peanuts and beer, but screams at everyone about how expensive the mixed drinks are. Like, why are you still here? You have to either accept this new game or move 
on. Because I look at Overwatch 2 as a simple transaction between myself and Blizzard. I get a free game with pretty regular updates and changes. And in exchange, all I need is the godlike willpower to say no to a $20 piece of digital clothes that even if I bought, I won't actually own anyway. I don't know about you, but that's not a bad deal. Like it if you liked it, subscribe if you loved it, and please share this video. It helps the channel and tell me down below how you really feel. Thanks for watching.